Hi. Hello students. Good morning. How are you? I hope all are fine and safe at home. Welcome back to online class. Um, grade 10 social science that economics unit 2 globalization and trade. Today we can learn about globalization and trade. Okay. Before that, uh, last previous class already I have completed unit 1 and marked all the answers. Isn't it? Um, I am thinking you have learned well. Today we can learn unit 2 globalization and trade. Okay. In this lesson uh, about globalization, history of globalization, trade and traders in South India historical perspective about these things only today we are going to learn. And also uh, early traders, European traders, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the British, Danish and the French. Are you clear? Okay. So first one, first thing, what is globalization? What is globalization? Do you know what is globalization? Globalization is the process of integrating various economies in, of the world without creating any barriers in the free flow of goods and services, technology, capital and even labor or human capital. Under globalization, the international market for goods and services are integrated. So, what is globalization? Globalization is the process of integrating various economies. Economies means country of the world without creating any barriers. Barriers means what? Any uh, difficulties in the free flow of goods and services, technology, capital and even labor or human capital. So, uh, actually we can say it is the connection of different parts of the world. Okay, globalization is the connection of different parts of the world resulting in the expansion of international, cultural, economic and political activities. So, it is the movement and integration of goods and services among different countries. Okay, so actually globalization is the process by which ideas, goods and services spread throughout the world. So, it is the connection of different parts of the world. Okay, can you give some example for this globalization? Yes, right, that is social media in that which are the platform of this social medias? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Send it. These are the example for globalization. Next, what is trade? Do you know what is trade? Trade means what? Buying or selling of goods and services between people or countries is called trade. Are you clear? What is globalization? It is the connection of different parts of the world resulting in the expansion of international, cultural, economic and political activities. Okay. Or globalization is the process of integrating various economies of the world without creating any barriers in the free flow of goods and services, technology, capital and even labor or human capital. So, under globalization, the international market for goods and services are integrated. Okay. What is trade? The buying or selling of goods and services between people or countries is called as trade. Okay. So, today we can learn about uh, what are the things we are going to learn according to this lesson. Meaning and history of globalization. 
trade and traders in south india historical perspective evolution of growth of mnc fair trade practices and wto and the impact and challenges of globalization about these things only we are going to learn in this lesson okay mnc what is the meaning for mnc what is the full form of mnc multinational companies wto world trade organization okay first one introduction or about the globalization and trade already in the previous lesson unit 1 we have learned isn't it liberalization privatization and globalization lpg is also known as can you remember student yes that is new economic policy okay liberalization privatization and globalization lpg is also known as new economic policies have become a much talked of subject among pol politicians economists and businessmen in modern days okay next uh, globalization you all know globalization means what it is the connection of different parts of the world isn't it from this picture also you can clearly understand it is connected from one place to another place for what purpose for the expansion of international cultural economic and political activities only it was connected from one country to another country and also for the movement and integration of goods and services among different countries okay globalization is the integration of a country with the world economy so basically globalization signifies a process of internationalization plus liberalization also okay next uh, history of globalization here there are three types of globalization that is first stage second stage and third stage be clear so what are the types of globalization archaic globalization proto globalization and modern globalization do you know who has introduced this term globalization that is it was introduced by professor theodor levit okay who has introduced theodor levit he only introduced this term globalization so there are three types of globalization stage 1 archaic globalization stage 2 proto globalization stage 3 modern globalization okay about these things only one by one we are going to learn in detail first one archaic globalization see uh, archaic globalization that means archaeology uh, in more old and days i uh, find out more things is it archaeology archaeology archaea thonmayana in tamil we say okay so it was happened between two countries summer and indus valley between there was a trade link between two country summer and indus valley so it was argued by um andrew gander frank he only argued globalization has been existent since the rise of trade link between summer and indus valley civilization in third millennium bc in which year it was argued in third millennium bc only andrew gander frank has argued that there was a trade between summer and indus valley civilization are you clear between these two countries only in third millennium bc there was a trade contact has happened it was argued by andrew gander frank okay next uh, it was known during the hellenistic age also to during the greek period also it was no okay and there was a trade link between many countries which are the countries has trade link roman empire parthian empire and the han dynasty during this archaic period itself there was a trade link between these countries roman empire parthian empire and han dynasty also there was a commercial link between these countries and also a development of the silk road was formed okay 
uh, the, this archaic globalization uh, was also an important early stage of globalization so uh, during this islamic golden age was it was introduced okay the advent of the mogal emperor through destabilized to the commercial centers of the middle east company and china between two country middle east company and china only the trade has happened uh, through this silk road okay so there are pre modern phase of global exchange or sometimes known as archaic globalization so this pre modern phase of global exchange are also sometimes known as archaic globalization so what is another name of this archaic globalization pre modern phase of global global exchange are you clear next one proto globalization what do you understand about this proto next phase is the second stage is the proto globalization so next to archaic globalization it is the second stage that is the proto globalization okay so it was happened during 16th and 17th century when it was happened it was happened in 16th and 17th century in 16th century portuguese and spain empire were have this globalization and in the 17th century dutch and the british empire have this globalization not you clear so the many european empires has characterized this globalization maritime empire uh, european empires that means through the sea route okay in which year they have come to india with the help of the sea route who has find out this new sea route of india that is the vasco da gama very very good next term. so the, this proto globalization is the middle middle globalization and also it is next to archaic globalization it is the second stage it was arise during 16th and 17th century during 16th century portuguese and spanish empires were started this uh, globalization and uh, in 17th century dutch and the british east india company has started this globalization so this globalization became private business phenomena like british east india company when did this british east india company has founded in 1600 so there is on another one onward question which is the world first multinational company that is the british east india company when it was started means in 1600 only it was started in india are you clear okay it is the world first multinational company that is a british east india company it was started in 1600 next uh, the in 1602 the dutch east india company was established in india okay next uh, stage is the third stage is the modern globalization so what do you know about this modern globalization it was started in 19th and the 20th century but there is a lot of difference between this 19th century and the 20th century okay so uh, there is a two important points in the 19th century what has happened means the whole world only the capital investment and the economy and uh, has happened only capital uh, capital investment and the economy the three things only happened during the 19th century okay but in the 20th century there is a trade in merchant production a growth of the trade in service and the rise of production and trade of multinational firms also happens in the 20th century how do you clear students in modern globalization when it was started means during 19th and 20th century only <coughs> there is a vast difference between this 19th and 20th century uh in 19th century what are, what are the things happen how this trade was happened between two countries what is the globalization that means only capital investment and the economy only happened in during 19th century at the same time 
in 20th century there was a large import and export has happened and um, many production has grown has done and uh, many goods and services was exchanged from one country to another country okay so there was a multinational firms also has occurred in this 20th century very clear next uh, trade and traders in south india historical perspective okay so they have formed one group south indian has formed one group for what purpose guys means what one group south indian traders has formed one group by merchants in order to organize and expand their trading activities they have formed one group for what purpose they have formed one group means in order to start their trade okay and to expand their trading uh, trading activities so this group what they will do means the indian culture was exported to other land the help of the trade groups only they have exported the things whatever things they have produced goods and services was exported to other countries very clear next one early traders what do you know about this early traders so in 1053 only there one red colored stone was formed by kalinga king okay red colored stone was formed in 1053 by kalinga traders and also cotton textile to the southeast asia okay so in 1053 red colored stone was started by this kalinga traders for trade and cotton textile to southeast asia okay next one european traders what do you know about this european traders how they come to south india okay so this european traders for what purpose they come to south india okay so uh, european uh, traders because of this trading activities they come to south india in european companies which came to india during this period the discovery of a new sea route who has found out this new sea route between india and europe that is a portuguese sailor the vasco da gama cape of good hope he has found out after reaching the respective on the civilized world so because of this finding this new sea route only they have come to india the european traders has come to south south india okay the discovery of a new all sea route from europe to india cape of good hope by vasco da gama had for reaching a repression on the civilized world so uh, next to this european the portuguese same the portuguese you all know who has found out the new sea route of india was kodagama a portuguese sailor so when did he come to india at which place he has come at first first where he has landed through the uh, voyage long distance he was traveling and uh, at last he reached in uh, 1498 he reached at calicut on may 1498 so what are the goods brought by vasco da gama by 60 times cost of the entire expenditure to india okay first trip first time he has come to india in 1498 uh, at calicut so profits of goods brought by vasco da gama to portugal were to 60 times cost of entire expenditure to india Okay. the second trip of vasco da gama in 1502 led to the establishment of trading station so second time while he is meeting to south india he has formed many trading centers okay in three places he has started the trading center that is calicut cochin and kannanur in three place vasco da gama started his own 
trading centers and also he has kept Cochin as his capital. Okay, the Portuguese kept this Cochin as his capital. Okay, are you clear? Next one, the Dutch. The Dutch undertook several voyage. Voyage, what is the meaning of voyage? Sailing on the sea. From 1596 and formed the Dutch East India Company. So, in 1596 only, they have formed this Dutch East India Company. In 1605, on Dutch factory at Mazuli Patinam was started by Admiral van der Hang. Admiral van der Hang has started one Dutch factory at Mazuli Patinam and Petapoli and Devani Patinam. Okay, when they have started this uh, factory in 1605. By whom? By the Dutch people, Dutch East India Company. Next, in 1610, the king of Chandragiri has found another factory at Pulikat. He has started another factory at Pulikat. Next, uh, the commodities were exported by the Dutch were which are the what are the things they have exported you know from our country to their country indigo and Bengal raw silk okay like same like Portuguese they also kept this Dutch, uh, Pulikat as his headquarters okay which was the headquarters of Portuguese Cochin Cochin was the headquarters of Portuguese, like the same thing. Dutch people also kept this Pulikat as the headquarters of the Dutch in India. Okay. Next term, the British. What do you know about this British? So, already I learned oh, the world first uh, multinational company was started by the British East India Company, isn't it? So, on 31st December, 1600, Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth has given permission to start this English East India Company. So, on 1600, Queen Elizabeth has given permission to start the English East India Company. Okay. So, yeah, on the, the English East India Company was established at Mazuli Patinam in 1611 and near Pulikat in 1626. Okay, the English has granted the Sultan of Golconda also. Okay, in 1632, they allow free trade. In 1632, what they have done? They have given free trade. But in 1639, they built one fort. What they built the fort means in Madras. That is the St. George Fort. Okay. So, this 1639, St. George Fort was built by the British East India Company in Madras, which soon displays Mazuli Patina as a headquarters of English. So, which was the headquarters of this British Mazuli Patina. So, once again I am saying, which was the headquarters of Portuguese, Cochin as the headquarters, which was the headquarters of Dutch, Pulikat was the headquarters of Dutch and which was the headquarters of British Mazuli Patina. Are you clear? Next, uh, uh, the French. Here, the Danes formed an East India Company and arrived in India in 1616. Okay. Before that, the Danes, I will explain. The Danes formed an East India Company and arrived in India in 1616. The Danish settlement were established at Tarangambar. Where they have started means in Tarangambar. In 1620, uh, which, uh, which was the headquarters of dance in India. So, Tarangambar is the headquarters of dance. They failed to strengthen themselves in India and in 1845 was forced to sell all their Indian settlement to the British. So, what happened? Because of their failure, they want to give all their settlement to British company. Okay. So, once again I am saying, which was the headquarters of Portuguese? Cochin. It was the headquarters of Dutch, that is Pulikat, which was the headquarters of British, 
Mazulipatinam and which was the headquarters of dance that is Tarangambar that is in Tamil Nadu and last finally the French which was the headquarters of French that is Pondicherry okay Pondicherry was the headquarters of French okay. the, so first French factory in India was established in 1668 okay so who has given this permission to start this French factory Sultan of Golconda the king of Golconda Golconda king only has given permission to start this French factory in India in 1668 in 1693 what happened is the Dutch captured Pondicherry after a few days back here yeah, they have handed back to the French okay in 1701 only they have find out that Pondicherry as his headquarters of the French are you clear students so thank you students